All right. Okay. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. I have Vinicus Cortez with me. And um, Vinicus, thanks, man. Thank you. So Very tell nice me. To be here. Yeah, tell me a little. What do you do now? You know, because I think um, you, you're young. You're just getting in this. So why don't you just introduce yourself? Tell us about yourself. So my name is Vinicius, Vinicius Cortez. Yeah. And I work as a 3D artist for about two or three years. Everything that I learned was from most of the internet, watching video tutorials. Mm -hmm. And I and I study I studied graphic design uh, here in Brazil. Yeah. But I really like it to I really like it to work with 3D. Okay. Well, you know, what's, actually, what's my... yeah. Let me interrupt you there if you if you don't mind. So you've been in the industry or you've been working two three years. Um, you're young though. True. Yeah. You got started super early. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, did you did you do this like right out of high school or something like that? No, no. I I just to be honest was most in the internet. Okay. Internet tutorials. Great. Oh, that's where you learned. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, so um, you started graphic design. Now you do three D. Uh, tell me about. Uh, you're still in Brazil. Yeah. Tell, tell me about the, Sao Paulo. Tell me about the industry there. What's it like? Because I know I've several amazing ZBrushers have come out of Brazil, and they're all in Hollywood now. But um, what's yeah. it like in Sao Paulo now? To be honest, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because here in Sao Paulo, I, I never worked you know, in an industry here in Sao Paulo. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just working as freelancer in the moment. Oh, got it. Yeah, so you're not even working. You, you're working freelance for projects outside of Brazil, then I take it. Yeah, much, uh, much outside. Okay, that's even that's even more important for me in the audience because um, you're you're young, um, you're working freelance and and making this happen. So tell me about the type of work that you do. Uh. Te texturing materials, 3D art in general. Okay. My most PBR PBR materials. Great. Um, what kind of clients do you have? If you can talk about that. Are they game uh, companies, I, advertising studios? Are they artists or? I I already worked for texture.com. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I I have done some substance for for them. Awesome. Also, also for others gaming gaming not very famous gaming industries, more indies. Got it. All right. So it sounds to me like substance is a big part of that. Yeah. Most part. Really? Huh. Is it substance designer, substance painter? Substance designer, material creation. What is your deliverable? Do you just deliver a substance file or something else? Substance procedure file and exported images, bitmaps. Sweet. All right. And then to generate these files, are you doing everything inside a substance or are you pulling photos and extracting information or mega scans or anything like that? Or you just build from scratch? He, most, of my, most of my work is from scratch, but... You can use images inside Substance Design to create materials, but I like to most to make from scratch. Okay, got so it. 100% Substance. Okay. All right. So then for those who are here watching, this is going to be – we're going to talk Substance, and uh, and it's not uh, Vinicus. It's Vini, Vinicius? Vinicius. Vinicius. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, <laughs> my <laughs> my English-American tongue is a little – uh, not flexible. Uh, so we're going to talk and look at the uh, a demonstration of that. And um, if you guys have questions, uh, go ahead and ask them in the question, and I will feed those questions through. Um, but what's the first thing that you want to present to us? If you're, you know, and, and for me, you're, you're talking to an audience of mm -hmm. um, game artists, and substance is one of the things that you know. For for me, I've told everybody, you know, if they want to get to that next level, they want to help 
kind of people become aware of them, don't focus on ZBrush, focus on Substance Designer, Substance Painter. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, from your There's perspective, like what are your clients looking for? What is something that, you know, they need to focus on? Uh, so I will start here a new substance. Yeah. So I will, uh, I want to know what your students want to learn, you right? Yeah. Or if it's if it is a rock material or or another thing, something That's great. like Let's a ask. brick. Yeah. What do you guys want to learn? Take a poll real quick. Get your fingers typing. Those of you who are here live with me. I know there's a few of you that's got projects going on there. Is it brick? Is it plaster? Is it rock? What is it? Joseph's got it first. Bark. Tree bark. Tree bark. Yeah. You down for okay. that? Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a, I already have a tree bark material. And I will show you about it. Okay. I know, right, Joseph? He says, yeah, no problem. And, and Joseph's over there like, I can't get this to work. <laughs> uh, up a little bit. I just saw it. Uh, well, maybe not. Don't listen to me. Just, you know, that's my advice okay. to everybody who works for me, too. Don't listen to me. I could have swear I saw it. There we go. Joseph saying he took a Megascan ZBrush file and took a section, tiled it, then took the height and the normals into Designer and made other maps. You can see the comments on the side too if you open up the, the viewport. We don't see it. It doesn't okay. show. I will take a look. Yeah, but you can see that. I'm trying here to resize the resize the window. Resize the window. Okay. Just so you know it doesn't show in the recording. So go to meeting pulls it out. Okay. So the students aren't they see what's beneath behind it. Uh, and then you should be able to, I think there's, well, it depends. Are you in the web? No, you're not in the web. Good. Okay. I open in here the tree bark material. What the man, I always love looking when people open up substance files because it's always like big. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's always impressive, right? Because <laughs> you're always you're just like, <laughs> okay, that's like that looks like that thing's intelligent. All right, there you go, Joseph. Is this realistic enough? Does this work for you? Something like this? <laughs> sure, he says. <laughs> All right, so um, this might be a good thing to unpack. I imagine this is absolutely not something you recreate from scratch in front of people. Um, about how yeah. long does it take to make something like this? Uh, I can tell this one was about four or five hours. Five hours? Yeah, five hours. Wow, that's pretty solid. I think the main secret of substance designer is making a lot a lot of noises and merging them. Okay. So what do you start with? Because I I mean I think with this 
we may get really nice. crazy confused if we're not too careful. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Could you repeat? Could you repeat, please? What do you start with? How does this start? Mm, just this noise. And Simple where do you noise. make that noise? This is the Grange map, 005. Can I press space? If you type Grange, mm -hmm. there will be a lot of Grange to choose. Yep. And this one is the 05. Okay. After this, I just give it a blur. I connect the, this two mm -hmm. to another. Then came from from this to this to give me a more a more non more non strange look of this another. Okay. A better hide. Then I just make a gradient. Which this as in push, gradient linear. If connected here, you will get this strange pattern, how much like a wood. Then I give another blur. And I have done a blend. Which multiply with a very low number. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in designer you you need to give low numbers to things that will look better. If you give Stop not me. just one but low numbers, more low numbers. Yeah. And here another gradient noise with some random random crystal noise. Okay. Warped a little. Then a gradient. This is the dilation node. It is a custom node that you can find in Substance Share. I, I use this one a lot. I think this one is the Substance Designer got this node officially will be very nice. So those two noises are being blended. Yeah. Can I see this, this noise? Yeah. This noise and this one blended with max lighting mode. Max lighting. Can I see the one? Can I see it where it's blended and not blended? So yeah, let me give you an example here. Can I see this window to the view? Yeah. For example, if I take this up, I think you probably will see the difference. Hmm. Okay, so it's for max yeah, lighting mode. Yeah, it didn't change much as well. Okay, because it's very early in the pipeline. Yeah. Dilation again. Let me see if I can show better what dilation does. This is just a normal map. If I think that I use a lot is use a normal map to see what I'm doing. Okay. It's better to see. 
normal map, you have to stand off in the thing, city. Okay. I will duplicate duration. Just so you can see the difference of what duration can do. Mm, it's subtle. Yeah. So when I increase it. Oh, nice. Just, just give a more, I think just give a more realistic look. Sometimes for rocks or three by materials, this is a good node that you can find in Substance Share. Okay. All right. I tell you what, um, let, are you, um, can we create this from scratch a little bit? Not the whole thing, but do you mind doing this from scratch for Joseph? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, because I think this might be a little, there might be too much here for us to unpack. Okay. Um, but we could probably create a basic version. Yeah, no problem. It will be different. We'll create another here. First, we need to create here the output for ambient occlusion that will not come with okay. this template. It's just an output node. And we set here the usage to ambient occlusion. Here on the roughness, I will add a uniform color just to make it look less shiny here on the on the shape here. Okay. And now I can control here. So I will start with a grunge map. <clears throat> it's not a zero three, it's zero Now I will use a non-uniform blur. This is also, also a node that I use a lot. We just set these samples to max. Blur is true. And we connect this other to blur map too. The uniform blur works in a way of when you connect something to the blur map, where is more right will be more blurry.
Now let's let's create a normal to see what we are doing. I don't know if you guys can see, but this is already something that already can be a bark material. Okay. It has the the forms of a bark. Now we created a slope blur. And we connect both here. And now we have a better look. Better shapes. Now I've heard um, many artists say that one of the first kind of goals they have is um, to work on the height. So is that kind of what your focus yeah. is here by um, um, using the normal map? Is you're just trying to get the uh, the height? It's better to, uh, yeah, it's better to see what the height is if, okay, because. Sorry, because if if you look here, uh, sometimes you can see uh, all of the details of the map, of the height map. Okay, and who's um who's following along here? By the way, guys, who's got their substance open and is following along? Let me know in the chat. Um, so I want to unpack something real quick. So I, you have the Grunge Map 05. You've got a non-uniform yeah. blur on there. What's the settings of your non-uniform blur? The settings is always samples to the max and blades to the max. And the intensity, it can be 3.5. A really nice thing here with Substance Designer is that you can, as it is known, destructible, you can change this every time. Okay, so you've got that. Your intensity to 3.5. Those things all the way up. Okay, got it. And then your slope blur, what were the settings on that one? For the slope samples to 32, intensity 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And mode, mode to blur. And mode to blur, got it. Yeah, yeah by default set there. All right, so that pipes in and that creates a pretty decent foundation for you. Yeah. Now, as you go through this process of creating, um, um, you know, these things, like, you know, one of the things I'd really start to love to know is like, what, what is your thinking process for, for changing things up? I What's the next I thing you it, add? I think you just, you, to be honest here, I have the bark. Uh, I, I'm creating a bark from, from my mind, mm -hmm. but you, yeah, I think you need to look to a reference always. Yeah. Then, then if you look the reference, you will 
probably know what you need to do. If you if you know the uh, what the nodes of services can do. I think you, everybody needs to try different nodes to mm -hmm. see, to see what they can do. Here, for example, I will just try the curve node to see if it, if I can get a better result. Here, for example, if you use curve nodes, you can make your shape look even better or in, or in some specific way. Then I can create a blend. And if I want to merge this true i can just i can't just merge them now because if i do they are uh, they are almost in the same position so i need to make the other to be change the offset of the the other one so i create a safe safe transform Always grayscale because we are not work with, working with colors. Then if I go to offset, I can tweak the offset. Now I can merge with the, the other. And if you see which normal map, you can see the difference. Mm. Now I have more small shapes. Right. Because if uh, because on the anatomy of the textures, we need like small, medium, and big shapes. That that's something that uh, that's something that I learned with Josh Link. Mm -hmm. on a mentorship that I've, I have done with him. Awesome. Yeah, Josh is awesome. So you're getting your different scale of details. And what was that node called that was a uh, the the safe transform? Yeah, safe transform, safe transform just to make the offset to change the position of the, the hash map with the offset. Okay. If I double click normal, normal map, and just give one click to the transform, I can uh, change the pattern, the parameters of the trans safe transform and seeing what's happening with normal. This way I can, I, I can choose what I like more. Got it. That was a little trick to adjust one. Okay, so in your curve real quick, if you don't mind heading back to your curve, what did you set up in your curve? Um, it was, yes. that's essentially just a contrast. A yeah, just a random, random points. Yeah. But in, looking, looking rich normal. 
Okay, got it. But you're kind of taking from the high end because of the way that curve is set. It's just going to take the high end info, sort of. Got it. I think what you do with curve is most what you see and what you like. If you like the shape, that will that will will be enough. And always max lighting to make the in, in blend to make the blend in max lighting. I always use max lighting on blend to make the every blend of each maps. Okay. So you can max also and use lighting. There we go. Yeah. Uh, You're blending max mode. lighting. Mm -hmm. Blending mode, max lighting. To blend height map to height maps together. Mm -hmm. And you can you can uh, with that safe transform too. Yeah, you can rotate, but but not same one hundred percent free. Yeah, it does. It it locks. It seems. Yeah. Uh, you can make it make it horizontal. Got it. But not very very free. You can also tile it if you want more small shapes. You can tile. Uh, within the um, within the safe, safe transform time. node. Yeah, I can tile the the height map. That's interesting. So now, um, could you technically create two safe transforms? You could create a couple of safe transforms, I imagine. Then. Yeah, you can create a lot. And then blend those into each other as well, so that those become one. And blend mode, you said, is always max lighten. Okay. Also, you can use mean dark, and if you want to make something like more like a type of subtract from the other shape. This is good for brick, brick materials. Mm -hmm. If you, you see the difference. You've increased the intensity of your normal um, node, correct? Or yeah. would you increase Ten. it to 10? 10. Do you have to manually type that in? Yeah, manually type 10. Because mine only goes to three. There you go. Now you set it to 10. You just manually type it. Yeah, you can, you can always broke the numbers. OK, great. Okay, so all right, now we're looking at this. Let's say at this point, like we've gotten pretty far and I think it's cool in the normal map, but uh, at a certain point, isn't it kind of hard to know what this looks like? How do I start to preview this? What are the techniques or when do you start to preview this? Okay. I will take this normal. Mm-hmm. Just connect it to the normal output. And you will start to see. Control, shift, you can 
control shift right mouse button you can change the lighting control shift right mouse button on the 3d view you can there you go it's like change a, the light. yeah so control shift is just going to move that lighting around okay great all right so obviously not looking like wood yet <laughs> yeah but we're getting there but but we look we will look <laughs> all right cool um all right now in in this case uh if i'm doing this and i'm just doing it from scratch mine has a lot of reflectivity in it how'd you turn your reflectivity off roughness you just, Rough. just go to the roughness output that I use it a uniform color. Yep. Then with the grayscale of the uniform, black is more shine and right, right is more, uh, is more rough. Mm -hmm. I think when creating more shine is better to see the shapes. Just a little bit of shine then. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'd say right there we have a nice, I don't know about how you guys feel, so I'd really love to know, uh, Mustafa, Thiago, um, you know, how you guys are feeling, Laura, about that as like just, if we're talking about just a moment in time where you're trying to figure out, you know, a, a way to get something so that you can preview the shapes. I think we have a nice little compact moment um, right there. Do you guys kind of agree so far? Is anybody... And uh, trust me, if you're lost, I get it. But do you agree that we've kind of got a nice little moment where it's like we we added some complexity, we added some nodes, and we previewed it, and now we're actually looking at just shapes. So this is like a lockdown moment. Um, and then now the next question um, that I would have for uh, for Vinicius is is whether or not you know, or is basically what does he do now, right? So. Does he go and create more nodes? Does he go to reference? Um, how does he start to judge his success uh, on this? Um, so that's really my question for you now, uh, my friend. Is do you do you go to reference now? How do you judge if you're successful? And and at what point do you do that? If not, I will find a reference. Look for a reference. So you will then, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to... You're looking right now? Yeah. Okay. I will also need the reference to sample the colors of the material.
Okay. So we're going to gather reference and uh, we're going to look. Yeah. The next question I'll have for you is what do you look for or look at in your reference? Like what are the things you're looking to? So we'll wait until you get some reference to do that. Um, in the meantime, who's following along? Give me a quick yes or no, guys. Gabriel's, Joseph is. If you're not, that's fine. I just wanted to get a sense. Mustafa. Okay. So if you get lost, guys, just shout it out, right? Because I'm, I'm literally following along as well. Um, but the goal here today, um, Venetia has been very uh, generous with his time and and um, and sharing his knowledge. So I want to uh, make sure that you guys have a crystal, like you have a clear sense of how to proceed to building. Because the key thing about substance, in my perspective, is it all comes down to your construction process. And um, you know, just like any, I mean, construction is all about taking complexity and simplifying it. So. Yeah, if you have a great look for art, art too, you can see uh, like the composition and the anatomy of the text. It's mm. very important. Like co colors, and things like that, like that. Got it. All right. So were you able to find some decent reference? Yeah, I found the reference. Now I, I will change the, the shared screen. Okay. So I can show it in Photoshop. Cool. Can you see the Photoshop yep. window? I see it, yeah. So what are you looking for when you look at this? What, you know, I'll put it this way. So if if I was teaching character sculpting, I'd be, and this is anatomy, you know, I would be talking about, you know, the big shapes of the arm as a cylinder, and then you look for the separation of the deltoid, so there's the boundaries of the deltoid. When I'm mm -hmm. looking at this, how do I have an anatomical conversation? Because I know there's an anatomy of this texture. Um, yeah. How, but what is the things that a layman can look at that helps? What are some words or concepts that help us turn this image into anatomical understanding? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes. I will, I will use the brush here to show. Awesome. Also, I like to choose a specific part mm -hmm. of the texture to focus. Okay. And here we can see that the grunge map that we use it, also that uh, I discovered before, it's the same drawing of this, this random drawing. If we see here on our grunge map, mm -hmm. We have almost these lines here. Yeah. In black. And with uniform blur, we just made it the right parts of this pop up. The right part, parts of them, uh, the branch map jumping, yep. jumping out a little. And here we have the small shapes, medium shapes, big mm -hmm. shapes. And this is what we are doing here with the blend. Okay. The blend and the safe transform, all of that creates those smaller um, pieces smaller pieces yeah okay got it so the first thing you do is you look for the shapes and i always look for the shapes 
Okay, and then those shapes are things like there's the lines that go through it and the and the clumping. You could almost say the word clumping, how yeah. the shapes are clumped. So they're clumped in long pieces and in shorter segments. Yeah. Also trying to see the trying to see the height. A okay. great thing to see the height is you can make let me just back this. If we turn this black and white, it will be better to, if you can to see mm -hmm. the the height difference. Yep. We can see that we have very, very deep, very deep holes here mm -hmm. in the lines, and we not. We not have this yet here. To make it, we can also use the curve node. Okay, so this will be contrast. It'll separate the dark and the, it'll basically um, allow us to get more to black, white, and um, harder contrast between the values, right? Yeah. Okay. So we can make the holes, the deep holes of the, the bar. Okay. Ah, the deep crevice. Yes, okay. If we look at the difference between these two, we can see that we we already have the deep parts. <coughs> Let's try to blend it. But this time we are not using max lighting or mean darkening. We will use multiply. That will take the the same as Photoshop. You take the more dark parts and multiply on top of the the background. Now, if we create a normal, you see. Also using it with a strong intensity. Okay. We can see now that we we have the holes. Also, let's hold shift, click here, and drag to here to update our 3D view. But we can we can see it as a whole. That's why because we need to create the ambient occlusion node. And let's connect it to the ambient occlusion.
but we need to drag the ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion to the 3D view, holding the right mouse button, drag, drop and set, set it to ambient occlusion. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm just taking a look at the chat. Also here we can try blurring the image to see better, to focus better on the shapes. Mm -hmm. Now with the blurred image, we can see what we are missing here. Let's create another safe transfer. And change the position. Which offset. This time, let's try to use the height blend instead of the blend which makes lighter. But for this first, I need to make one of these two more darker. So it can be more, more lower on the height. For this, we will use history rain range. In this way, we can control the grayscale. Also, now I will increase the resolution of the material. I can click two times here on the uh, on the grid, the graph view, and in output size, I will increase it. Mm, nice. Which node was that again? For this, 
We will not uh, for what for that you increase the tile, the output size. The output size was just click outside here. Ah, got it. Graph. Click two times, mm -hmm. or click here on our explorer. Here on the name of our material, we click here, and we change here. We need to be careful to not change on a specific node here. We need to change the entire material. What'd you end up changing it to? True. True on the height and release. Output size. Now we are working with 248 by 248 images. But also that will be will be heavier to tweak the parameters. I will just save the material here. Strange, my 3D view just disappeared. Yeah? We're <laughs> closing open again. Okay, fair enough. And then I want to unpack a little bit because I think we went through quite a bit of stuff right there. And so I want to make sure those who are following along have a clear sense of it. And that might be a nice place for us to wrap too because I don't want to – I could take up um, your entire day with this stuff because this is so incredibly important. You okay. Um, but I think uh, we should probably um, – pulled like just unpack a little of what we did and then probably call it a day there okay there we go all right so um uh uh, where were we? Okay, good. All right, so we were last at the moment of uh, the safe transform. And then after you went into the safe transform, you created a node and ambient occlusion and um, um, got some more movement happening in there. So I'd like to unpack that a little bit more. Uh, if you can okay. show us that, and let's look at the settings real quick. Uh, and um, And then I think the... Last thing I'd like to know is like what what is a what's the next path for you? So, so right now um, we were at safe transform, and then what did you add to that? Because now you've added a, a couple of nodes to that. So you added a curvature for the that was eventually going to go to the ambient occlusion, I think. Okay, here I just added the safe transform to make the offset, the position mm -hmm. different of this other to make the blend. Okay. Because if I can, I just can't blend the same the same position of the two height maps. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to change the offset. And for the height blend, I need to make one of them with a different height, different yes. uh, rescale color. Yeah. As this one is more darker, will be more lower on the height map. So I will connect connect this one to the bottom. Okay. And this one to the top. Okay. Now let's hold shift. Click this one to bring for our output of the hash blend to update here. Okay. On the 3D view. Now we can control control how we want.
with the height offset. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Now, but I what I think, yeah. I think it's not very good to to use the contrast. Okay. Because I've learned it from from some somebody, and I don't remember from from the algorithm, that if we increase from the nine, uh, can cause some problems. So we need to to leave this as as at least nine. We we can't be more. We can't be like ten. Now, one of the last things I think to really help sell this piece is how are you going to create the angular edges? Because right now it's all soft and round, right? Yeah. Let me see here. Let's create here a outer levels node. Bring this with shift. Now our height is more defined which outer levels. Just looking a bit on the reference. Mm -hmm. Let's start to warp this. When we have these two colors on the inputs, means that we can connect a color and a grayscale. For the intensity input, I will use a Gaussian nose. It will warp our height information based on our on our nose noise. This is very strong. Now let's create another safe transfer. Change the offset. Create a blend. Is there something that determines whether one's on top and one's on bottom? Yeah. For this case, I want uh, this one on top to subtract in, in for information for the other okay. on, on the bottom. But I will not be using subtract. We can see how this looks. Mm -hmm. It could look good, but 
I think it will be better if you use mean dark. Eh? Got it. With this, we have more angular shapes. Let's create another safe transform. And give it a true on tiling. This is very very fascinating because um, before you did that, I was actually, I thought we had enough density, enough scale. I thought our scale was accurate. But now that you've done that, I can see our, the scale. I was, I, I wasn't noticing the smaller pieces. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I need someone smaller. Yeah. Do you have any advice? Like, cause I'm, I imagine in your own learning process, it took you a while to really see the true scale, you know, and how, yeah. small things are. I think, I really think this is with time. You will get this, this view, this different way of seeing the, mm -hmm. everything in this case with time, studying. I, I really don't know what to say more about this. Now I will use the custom node I was talking about. That dilation. is the filter, dilation, or erosion. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to give you some of your um, cleaner edges. Yeah. I just drag it here, open, and drag it again. If we just add it here, you see the difference. If you you use it very strong, it can cause some artifacts mm -hmm. of these squares. But anyway, if you you live this way, you can clean that after. No, oh. this is interesting. We used to do this inside a ZBrush. You just inflate everything, and then you can squash it down. Yeah. Son of a gun. I love this. It's like I, um, so many of the yeah, processes. I, I, yeah, I use this. I use this node every time. I think everybody should use this node. Sorry, what are you were saying? No, oh, no, nope, all good. I actually forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, you have a lot of that small detail. Yeah. Now we have the the details that we wanted. Okay. If we see the difference of before, the difference. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it all comes right there. This is one of the things that's really hard is under, if you don't understand process, then, you know, you're, you have to trust your process so much, you know, you've done this so many times. 
Yeah. That I think is also the hard part for a teacher is to figure out how to present this so that they learn to trust process. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. Because anyway, I before this node was was more difficult to make the everything before this delay to node. And I think uh, I think algorithm will add something like this in the future. In the meantime, we can just Google it and find it? Yeah, on Substance Share. Mm. Oh, good. Substance Share. Great. Here, here's the name. Dilation of Erosion. Yeah. Got it. All right. So. Don't need this iter iteration name. Don't need it to write okay. this. All right, great. So this is um, so let's do this, guys. Let's uh, let's get some questions in. If you've got questions about this, if you've been following along like I have, and then you got lost like I did, <laughs> then I'll have the recording <laughs> up for you ASAP uh, because I'm going to be doing the recording. I'm going to do this as soon as I get off um, this. It just takes a little bit for the system to transcode it. Um, now. What would be one thing you would do from this point? Don't do it. Just what would be one thing that you would do for this now before you would consider the height kind of done? Sorry, I didn't understand. So we're almost done with the height of this, right? Like we've, we're, we haven't done yeah. color. We've just done the height to get the parts and the segments. What, what is one so, thing that, it, that you would do to finish this off? So you want me to show the call or row? No, 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 no. Well, let's not go in there. That'd be like another hour. I'd, I'd love to see that. But that um, I think this is more than an, just like what you've unpacked is enough for us. It's a lot of information to, to process. OK. Yeah. Do you guys agree? But if you want, I can give a, a fast tip about the caller. Oh yeah, good. I mean, I'd like I I want one thing for us to understand like what how can we make this better? So yeah, if you got like a fast tip, that'd be great. Just the gradient? Yeah. Also, a software that I use to see the reference is this one. I will type here in the chat. Mhm. Mm it's a very awesome software. I just need to. What is it called again, sir? I just just need to drag. It's pull pull ref pull ref. Oh yeah, love that. Just now. Then I can just with uh, right mouse button choose where I want the window to be, and I can choose the mode to be always on top. So I, if I click here on Substance, we will never close or click anything. The window will never close. You can always be, be seeing the reference. Got it. Also, I can with a gradient map, I can use a resurveying range to just to make the information more, more subtle for the color, I drag it to the gradient. I click on the gradient editor, pick a gradient, you can pick the colors from, from the window of polygraph. You can drag it, take the colors I want. Also, I can take some grass. And just do a blend without any blend mode, just copy. Okay. Just blend the two. We drag again and pick the colors.
and we will have this strange, very noisy information. Mm -hmm. But just with vector vec, vector work, we take this info. Okay. Put on the top, and on vector map, always uh, most of the time on vector map, I consider it as a normal map input. If we take our our less normal map. Okay. It will make it adapt or color map adapt better with your your normal map that is almost your your shapes in high info. Mm -hmm. This is very strange, but I don't know if you want me to show more of color. Let's see it applied. Sorry, what? Let's see it applied. Okay. Before applying, let's use something that, that's very important. That was pretty cool little trick to just grab that gradient. Yeah. Let's use the PBR albedo safe color. Okay. Because in PBR, some colors are can be not correct, like fully black on color is, is not right. So this node will mm -hmm. adjust for you. If you see the very dark in areas, the nodes soften them. Yeah, got it. Let's show better. Mm -hmm. Because the, the information before was not right for PBR rendering. Nice. It it is strange, but we can see that that is as it is getting there. Yeah. That's pretty cool, though. How would you go about kind of smoothing out all the noise? Because it's like really pixelated yeah. little bits of noise. Very strange. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. If a thing that we can use is duplicate this vector warp. Yeah. Create a right noise. It's just a simple noise. Mm -hmm. And we give a normal map to it. And we have now a noise normal map. We can't forget to connect this one, the last, the last one on the top. Yeah. And for the vector, as I said, that I, I think this vector map, I, I don't, I don't really sure about it, but, but I think it's almost like normal map. Okay. Works very well with normal map. We connect it. And we have the colors that we choose, but a noisy version. Oh, okay. We can leave this way and we take a blend. Damn. This on top. This on the bottom. We don't need to use a blend mode because we will blend our colors and we'll make our colors sometimes incorrect, mm -hmm. like if we use self-check. So we leave it as copy and here. Got it. Okay. We can make it more or strange noises, mm -hmm. more soft. 
Yeah, and there's still detail in the color map. There's still like little bits of. It's still, yeah, it's not, it's not like pure just green. It's, it's not like pure noise yeah. like before in this one. Great. You can leave it this way. But here we need to make a adjustment. Okay. Like we for colors here in Substance Designer, we are also doing as layers. Okay. First, instead of everything that is green there and that is on top, we need to think about the color of the bark material that is above of this green layer. Yeah. So I will make you will know, take your uh, our gradient that we already have and just taking take your bark that we have here that is most right color can zoom Hold shift to bring this. And here we have our color of, uh, of our reference for the bark. Mm -hmm. After that, to make the other details like the parts that are green have the, the bit of moss we will, will need to make after finishing our height. Our height map needs, needs to be less, less flat. Got it. All right. You know what I love about substance people? You know, you ask them like, uh, you know, yeah, I'll show you this quick little thing. And then there's like 10 nodes that all unpack and <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, oh, this whole and you just do this and you do that and it's like the whole world expands so awesome thank you so much for doing this and for walking us through and for taking the time um to show your knowledge and your experience so where can people find you if they want to know more about what you do do you have an art station that you so, can uh, throw up yeah, on the course? yeah i have my art station page here okay great let me paste the link all right, and right now you do freelance work and uh, yeah, freelance work. develop materials and, you know, this is just what you do for a living. Yeah, basically, it's what I'm doing now for a living. Also, I, I am looking for work. Cool. Somebody needs to know. That's awesome. All right, Venetius, thank you so much for uh, for all of this. And uh, thank you guys for joining. And uh, make sure you head over to ArtStation and give him a follow so you can stay up to date on all of that. And I'll get the recording up for you guys uh, as soon as possible. Uh, thank you. I am very happy that I was able to do, do this interview here. I, I wish my English was better so I could show more things on a more fluent way mm, no you did fantastic and it, your english is much better than my portuguese so it's, just, it's, it's a good <laughs> trade-off <laughs> your english was great i don't even know if i could say hello in portuguese hello hello is hola well, well there you go it's spanish i know some spanish my grandfather's yeah, from uh, it's, almost, it's almost spanish all right well take care of yourself Thank you so much um, for, for showing this and for being part here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you right. a lot. Take care, guys. Okay, bye. Bye.